Hey, howdy, hey, it's Wednesday, which means it's time for Real Talk with Real Pros. I'm Tom Houghton, your host and guide to having great conversations live on the internet with construction professionals. Thanks so much for tuning in. So excited to see you all here. I think uh, Tankers League Construction just joined, which is great because they're our guests today. So I'm gonna be hopping on with Heather in just a second. Thanks so much for those of you who are tuning in. New Wave Constructions here, our hidden farmhouse. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, like I said, we're joined by Heather uh, Heather Tankersley from California in just a second. So stay tuned. We're gonna have a great conversation. Let me pass out some waves. Senior living fans here. Oh, there's Heather. Hi guys. How's it going? It's good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for uh, jumping on this uh, fun little live chat with me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, we're happy to have you. So we are, of course, for those people who are just tuning in, we're having a real talk with Heather Tankersley from Tankersley Construction uh, based in Northern California, the greater Sacramento area. Uh, shout out to the uh, Sacramento Kings. I mean, I know that's not really a thing, but you know. Uh, I don't know if you're a, a former Kings fan. Uh, still a Kings fan. Uh, unfortunately, they just have not been good in, you know, many, many years. So yeah. hold strong out here. That's good. That's good. Um, well, I thought we'd just dive in first and chat. Um, I, I want to chat about a lot of things today. I know you guys have a really interesting pre-construction process. Definitely want to talk about that. Job costing, of course, too, is something that uh, I think everyone could benefit from. And I know uh, you guys have a great process with that. I also know, uh, cause I just spoke with your husband, Steve. Uh, so your husband and wife duo, which is awesome. Uh, Steve is just for the people who are watching right now, we're, we have an episode. The reason I talked to Steve is cause we have an episode uh, on our podcast, The Building Code coming up uh, next Thursday, which is July 30th uh, that will release with Steve. But we thought we'd chat with you Heather today and talk about all those great things I just mentioned. So let's just, let's start first off, if people are just watching and they have no idea who you are, give us a background on your company so people can kind of figure out what's going on. Yeah, so Tankersley Construction, we started back in 2016. Um, Steve, my husband, is our license holder. Um, our background, both Steve and I came from commercial construction. Uh, he worked for some of the bigger GCs in the California you know, area. Um, my background was in electrical project management. Uh, we've both been in the industry for about 15 years. It's actually how we met was on a job site. So we, um, you know, it kind of started with us having our remodeling our kitchen and we were like, man, there's no real good residential contractors out there that do things to the standard we're used to doing in commercial. So we started the business and Steve jumped in full bore in 2017. Um, I was supporting him in the background, still doing my, you know, managing uh, commercial work. And last year I left and came on full time to Tankersley Construction. Um, we've grown in the last three years and um, we're up to, we've got eight employees between field and um, uh, project management staff. And we service the greater Sacramento area. Um, we do anything from, you know, a small, you know, we call small kitchen remodel, bathroom, uh, to additions as well. So we are serving, like I said, greater Sacramento area. And um, that's kind of been our niche market for, for now. And we're, we're growing like crazy, which is good. Sacramento's still in kind of COVID shutdown right now, but um, you wouldn't know it based off of our job board. Things are going like crazy. People here are very, I think, tired of seeing their same thing, tired of their kitchens, tired of their bathrooms. And so it's been very, very busy for us. Well, that's awesome to hear that you guys have been busy. I know that I think, yeah, the California governor, you guys opened and then now you're kind of closing back down. So I'm curious, just real quick, I don't want to go dive into the whole COVID thing too much. But I mean, ha have you seen any kind of effect with that kind of like opening and then kind of reclosing a little bit? I know it was just really recent that that happened. Yeah, so we're in Sacramento um, County, our offices and a lot of our projects are in Sacramento um, as well as Placer County, which are currently shut down. Um, but for us, for construction wise, um, you know, we're con still considered essential. So uh, construction has not been shut down for us and performing our projects. We've taken some other um, approaches to staggering, you know, crews and staggering people on site, um, you know, hand washing stations, those kind of things to, you know, be compliant and be 
proactive with COVID related issues. But for us, we have not seen anything in terms of a major shutdown for us. Some of our clients have actually removed out of their houses. So they were like, please keep going on our project. Don't let COVID delay us, please. We want to keep going. We want to get back at our house. So it's hard to shelter in place when you aren't in your home. So <laughs> yeah, well, that, that does make it a little tricky. Yeah. Um, well, awesome. Thanks for kind of giving that background. Again, for those who are just tuning in, having a real conversation with Heather Tankersley from Tankersley Construction based in Northern California. We're going to be talking about their pre-construction process because so you came from the commercial world and applying this logic of the commercial world to the residential side, all of your experience as well coming along with that. So how did that shape your pre-construction process? So for us, we really, you know, coming commercial, you really build your schedule. You know, there's a, the pull plot whole planning method. So you take the longest lead item or the longest duration activity and you build out your schedule. So for us, when we developed our pre-construction process, you know, the client hires us to, you know, typically they'll work with a designer and we take, we team up with the designer and we go through kind of a four step process during pre-con. So we will start with the basic concept of, you know, floor plan, um, you know, the client will buy off on what we're going to do for a floor plan. If it's a kitchen remodel, bathroom, what configurations need to happen. We then now we then take the floor plan and we analyze, okay, what's impacted? What's moving, right? Is there a gas line? Is there plumbing? Is there an existing soffit? So we will actually, we'll go in, you know, maybe cut a few holes in, figure out what's there and figure out what we're going to need to plan for. So we're not opening a wall and going, oh shoot, there's something in here we got to take care of now. So knowing those things allow us to be prepared, maybe give us a little more time in some framing, a little more time in demo, um, allows us to build the schedule properly for things that we, you know, as much as we can know before the walls are open. Then we also take into account, you know, we'll go to a cabinet meeting, talk to, you know, get preliminary cabinet shop drawings with verification for final measure. Um, that then will allow the cabinet maker to give us some input on how long to uh, generate the cabinets. From there, you know, owner will make final selections for appliances and plumbing fixtures and all those, you know, good pieces that come together on a job. And we can see what the lead time is for those items. So now we're easily going, okay, if cabinets are the longest lead time, let's build it out. When will those be ready? When can we put them in? And we'll back into it. We need this much for framing, this much time for drywall, this much time for demo and, you know, maybe flooring, depending where that sequence is and what we're doing for floors. And that's how we build our schedule. And so the client, you know, ultimately, yeah, you know, we, they'll ask, well, how soon can you start? And my response is how quickly can you make decisions? Once you make decisions, then we can build your schedule and we can set the start date. So that's a very, very high level um, kind of explanation of how we manage pre-construction, but it works well. We get buy-in from our trade partners They'll come out, look at the job, give us their durations. So we know, you know, the plumber says, hey, I need four days. Okay, I'm giving you four days. Um, you know, if it goes to five, hey, plumber, what's going on? We talked about these days. So we're getting commitment from our trade partners too. Um, we still perform all of our um, carpentry, both rough and finish, and then we sub out the other trades. So there's our self-performed labor. And then our key sub trade partners that we utilize um, that allow us to be able to build very accurate schedules, very similar to what you would do in commercial construction as well with kind of a pull planning method. Everybody makes commitments to what they need for durations, who's going to come next, and what do you need from the individual that's in front of you in order to do your scope of work. Fantastic. That was a great rundown. Um, if, if you're watching this and you've got a question too for Heather, uh, just leave us a comment there. I know, I think somebody wrote in a question, do you engage uh, in a pre-con price for Explorer demo? Yes, we do. So we do st charge a nominal fee, um, you know, enough to cover our time, cover, you know, a superintendent or, pre you know, pre-con manager to come out and do these things. Typically, it's about four meetings that we'll have with the client, plus we'll do a sub-trade walk and then maybe one kind of exploratory meeting, you know, get the electrician out there or the plumber if there's something major that has to happen for you know, a reroute or a relocation. Now, let me ask you this. So you guys are three years, a little three years plus into the business. Mm -hmm. Did you start off doing that or did you, was that a change you made after, you know, you realized how much went into that process going through all the pre-con stuff? Um, you know, it kind of developed um, out of a recognizing that, you know, 
you come in and it's great when somebody calls you and says, hey, I want you to remodel my bathroom. And we say, okay, great. Do you have your tile picked out? Well, no. Okay, are you going to do a tub or a shower? Oh, no, I haven't decided that yet. So, you know, kind of developing the process as we've gone along. And then we work with a lot of key designers here in the Sacramento area. And so we've really engaged the designers that we work with of how, you know, how do you build your spec books? Um, how do you, you know, help your client with selections? And then we kind of work with the designers on developing um, you know, strategic meetings to review those things. We uh, typically will do a budget for the client. So then they know overall very high level, very, um, you know, uh, broad brush stroke of this is what we think your job's going to cost. This is what we've kind of allocated for you for material allowances or, you know, countertop allowances or tile. So then as they go through the selection process, we're checking in with the designer, we're checking in with the client. Have you guys decided these things? Um, you know, sometimes we like to, I joke, I like to be the, I'm the bad guy when we have these meetings because, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about, okay, well, you know, the client will fall in love with something and I'll say, Hey, I can do anything, but that's not what was in the budget. So we try to also work with the, the client and the designer to ensure that if we've set a budget that we're designing to that and we're sticking with that. So, and it's a very much a collaborative process with the designers that we work with. Fantastic. I, I mean, Again, in talking with you just right now and talking with your husband, Steve, I am so impressed with being three years into the business and being at, running as tight of a ship as you guys run. Uh, I mean, it's extremely impressive. And I, I, I attest that to your experience prior to just kind of going out on your own. You, you're clearly applying all the stuff you've learned and continually trying to make it better, which is extremely impressive. So kudos to you guys. Keep up the great work with that. Um, I wanted to ask you a little about job costing too, because I think that was your, you know, your baby bringing that into the, into the business. Yeah. So my, my background and where I'd worked for some various other companies, you know, you, you lived and die by what your, you know, your committed costs are and your job costing. And um, we, it was, uh, you know, it was CTC week at, at my old companies. And it was like the week everybody dreaded because you're going through and you're analyzing where we are with committed costs and how much and what is it going to take to finish the job. And so I, I joke now that every day is CTC day now that you own your own company. So um, it's, it's interesting because um, for us, it was, we, we always, we always knew job costing was a, a fundamental piece. And we, you know, we set up our company that way from the start, which was good, but, um, it's getting all the various layers and getting it built in and kind of building the back end. So for us, we, we've been using builder trends since day one when we started the company, but we've slowly been integrating all the parts and pieces. And so um one of the things that we we kind of joked about is that i wanted to get all the back end set up and everything talking with builder trend and being able to utilize uh more of the job costing features in builder trend and so i've been working on that working on it and you know there's only so many hours in the day and then COVID hit and we i actually i joked i'm like well one of the good things from COVID is i finally got my really good integration with everything and i got a lot of cost codes cleaned up and a lot of things integrated with quickbooks uh you know this like month we had to to kind of you know breathe for a minute and like regroup so i uh i got to at least uh, get some uh you know some catch up on that but job costing for us has been um it's a it's a key fundamental part of the business, right? And obviously, you can get that through QuickBooks and being the owners, we see that all the time, you know, I'm in and out of the books, you know, every day. But for us, it's really integrating for our team and our team to be able to see that, right? So I don't need everybody looking in QuickBooks. But for us, I'm getting more buy in with our project managers. And we, you know, we have the established estimate. We have the established budget and then the project managers are tracking, you know, the POs that they're writing from Builder Trend and we're sending out. They have, can easily look at it and see, yeah, I pushed that payment. Oh, yep, yeah, we already got a check cut. That payment already went out and they can see it in real time right there when the sub's on site and they're going, hey, why haven't I got my check yet? And it's like, oh, look, I'm looking at Builder Trend. Yep, they got cut on this date. It already got sent out. So. For us, that's been a, a big plus and something that we've got, we finally got to get to, to roll out and do this year, so. 
That's fantastic. Um, I'm sure there's probably people watching this who maybe aren't at those stages yet. Uh, maybe they're considering job costing. I mean, I kind of feel like it's a big process. You kind of admitted to that. What would you say to somebody who's not doing it, who wants to do it? Any tips or tricks there? So I think it's really, um, I think it's, it's hard because if you don't have if you don't have an accounting background or if you're not the person doing the books every day, you really have to get buy-in from whomever is doing your AP um, and doing your payroll and really understanding the process of how QuickBooks and Builder Trend push to one another and how you make that reporting happen. Um, my recommendation is you pick a job, pick very basic, like, labor material and subs, right? Those are the key th three key things. Um, and just do a very basic, like, can I, if I put this in, can I see it here? You know, and oh, look, there it is, right? And just start small, start small. Don't, don't, don't try to do the whole company at one time. It's hard. Um, but if you at least pick a job, you know, maybe it's a small job, you know, that's going to be over in two weeks. Um, so you can easily in real time, see it. You're not waiting, you know, a job that's a six month duration. Oh, what went wrong? What didn't, right? Pick something small, start small, um, really get your team bought in. If you have somebody else doing AP and AR, um, and understanding how that system works. Yeah, that's good. Um, did you, so with all this, all, all this job costing, again, you're tracking a lot of data, especially cause you're doing a lot of work on the front end with the pre-construction process. <laughs> You're doing job costing again was this something that you went into knowing like hey if we're going to scale we've got to do this because you're going to watch the bottom line or like is that where you're driving the the scale from if, if that makes sense does that make sense question yeah I, th I think if i'm if i'm kind of understanding your question correctly it's how knowing what you're getting on the back end for the work on the front yeah so that, yeah so for us really i would say um in real time for us to be able to analyze that. It really took us um, looking at historically what we did maybe last year when we were doing as an extensive pre-con. We were doing, we were kind of getting the wheels on the bus going a little bit. This year, now we can really look at um, labor hours and take maybe what would be, you know, take a $50,000 bathroom remodel. How many labor hours did we spend, self-performed labor hours, did we spend on a similar job last year versus what we would spend this year? And in my mind, um, there should the return on that should be we should have a, our labor hours should be less, right? It should be we should be in and out. It should take us less time um, from our crews. Maybe not from a um, duration wise. We maybe we'll save a little bit of time. Maybe we don't, but we don't have the you know incidental trips to Home Depot because we forgot, you know, a piece for the plumbing, right? We're already doing that. We're ordering all of the parts and pieces ahead of time. They're already sitting on site. We already have all the items tracked. We're not, we're picking up the pieces from the little things that were forgotten. So for us this year, it's now putting into play of how is this benefiting us on the back end? We've seen it to be able to stagger our job starts. We can accurately predict how quickly we're going to get through framing and we're going to get through demo and then we can move and start the next job. So we are seeing that return uh, this year and it's, it's been nice to see it's taken a little bit of time to see the fruitions from the labor and, and buy into that. Yeah. But it sounds like it's working because you mentioned a lot of growth that's happening right now and obviously forecasted for the future. I'm assuming again, all of this data has to help you have a better pulse on your business. I'm assuming. Yes. So it definitely gives us the ability to see in real time, you know, we know, we know in real time with job costing, if you're accurately showing what you have for a committed cost, what you think you're going to have left to spend on material and labor, I know in real time what we're going to, at any given point, what we're going to make on the project. I'm not waiting until the end. I'm not waiting until I finish the job and going, gosh, I hope we make money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be it. It's got to be a huge peace of mind. Yes, I mean, we, we want to know that. And if there's a problem, we know it ahead of time because then it gives us a chance to, to do something to fix it. Or if we need to fix it, we can. Once the job's done and you lost money, I mean, that's it. Yeah. How does well, this translate to your customers? I mean, again, as a consumer of construction, 
you know, I hear speaking to you that you can go into my project and you can track kind of all of these details. And I feel like I'm put at ease by this because you know so much about what's happening versus, you know, like, again, working with various contractors, sometimes they'll be like, oh, yeah, that'll cost uh, 10 grand. And then you start working on it. It's like, oh, yeah, maybe it's 15 now. And I don't really know. I'm not really sure, you know, like. Uh, so I'm assuming that your customers have received this well. Can you tell me about that process and working with them and getting them on board with this kind of method of doing things? Yeah, so for us, you know, it's really been a finding the right fit and the right customers that buy into our process. Um, we're not your average, you know, contractor. Um, and we tell our customers up front, we're not, you know, we're not the most expensive guy in town, but we're also not the cheapest guy, right? But what you're getting and the peace of mind, like you kind of described of knowing your job, knowing your scope. I mean, before we even start swinging a hammer and demoing your house, we know what it's going to take to go build it. We've already vetted, you know, all of your materials. We already know, hey, your panel needs to be replaced and we're going to have to do a new panel. We're going to have to get the utility company involved. We're already scheduled to do that. We're going to put a new panel in. We got to run new circuits. Like we're already working through all these things. So by the time we're ready to go, the field is running and the clients that we want to work with and the clients that value what we bring to the table, they're on board. That's what they want. And so, for us, it's really um, making sure that it's a good fit for us and it's a good fit for our client because really we set that expectation from day one. So they know and they have peace of mind from us that, hey, you know what, they Tangers is going to come in. They're going to take care of us. And if they say I'm going to have my house back in September, I'm going to have my house back in September. So it's benefited really well for us and our clients um, are very appreciative of being able to commit to a schedule and a deadline. Absolutely, it's fantastic. And the work you're doing is fantastic. I just wanna pull up a photo here really quick because uh, I think you guys just posted this uh, last night, I think, of yep. this kitchen remodel that you did, like a 90s kitchen. This is not the before, this is the after, folks, <laughs> that, you're, that you're seeing here for clarification. And it is beautiful, the work. So make sure you follow Tankersley Construction on Instagram here if you're not following them already because the work that you're doing is incredible. You're obviously doing it like on time and on budget, it seems like that's like a shoe in for you guys because you can keep track of all these costs and things like that. So that's really, really awesome. Thank you. You can see that photo by the way, right? Just making sure. Yes, yeah, so I can see I yeah. always get nervous a little about Instagram. Like, are you just seeing me talking and you're just imagining a kitchen? No, okay, just making sure, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's let's do this. Let's spend a couple minutes talking about um, kind of trends that you're seeing in your area. I mean, obviously, we just kind of showed that kitchen. I know you mentioned kitchen remodels a lot. What other areas are you focusing on in terms of your business? And what are you seeing in terms of what you're getting from your clients right now? So right now, it seems to be bathrooms. Bathrooms are like, everybody's redoing a bathroom. I don't know if everyone's just like trying to get over COVID, like soaking in the tub. I don't yeah. know. But bathrooms seem to be the trend right now. Um, lots of bathrooms uh, and bigger projects. You know, we, people that are, you know, hey, I've been stuck at home with my kids and our house is so small. And you know what? We decided we don't need the guest bedroom for grandma. We're going to make it now our school room and we want to blow this wall out. So bigger projects, bigger yeah. things for at home now. And um, I think really just focusing on how they make their space really, really enjoyable and really, really um, livable for what their life looks like right now. And it's so different now than what life looked like last year. So we're seeing a lot of that, um, you know, additions, those kind of things that are coming through people that really want to ramp that up. Um, I think for, for style wise, um, a lot of straight set tile, a lot of, a lot of straight set tile seems to be the trend right now I'm seeing. Um, with uh, some of the designs that are coming out uh, with some of the designers we work with, but that's kind of a, the latest. So yeah. So on the designer note, is do you have? You mentioned you have eight employees. Are one? Do you have design in house or do you work exteriorly? With no, designers? we we work exterior. Um, it's kind of funny. Everybody assumes since Steve's the con, you know, holds holds the license that Steve's the contractor and I'm the designer. And I'm like, no, that is not my gig. I do not design. I am not good at that. That is not my thing. I'm like, give me the details and I will help go build the project. I like the construction side. I'll, I'll let, I'll let everybody stay in their lane and do their thing. So. Yeah. 
That's awesome. And you definitely excel at what you do. So again, kudos yep. to you for that. That's fantastic. Especially like the husband and wife team. We've had a couple of them on chatting, uh, you know, in these lives and also on the podcast as well. It's just interesting to see the dynamic and how everybody kind of works together. I don't know if you can share a little bit about your dynamic and how that works. I mean, obviously, because, you know, it just depends on how everybody kind of sets up their company. Everybody sets it up a little bit differently. Um, and it does seem like you guys have two kind of separate lanes to run in. So it seems like everybody's got a pretty clear cut definition there, but maybe you can share some insight there. Yeah, so um, for us right now, structure of our company and how we run. So Steve's president of the company. He's the face, the first meet with the client. Uh, project in inquiry comes in. He's the one who goes out, looks at the project, um, you know, meets with the client first off, does the initial estimate for the client. Um, he's also in charge of any warranty work, anything that comes in that we need to go back. You know, hey, I had something going on here. Can you guys come back? Or hey, can you guys come take a look at this? Um, he's that initial call. You know, we joke. He's the beginning, and he's the like, hey, what's going on here? Can we can we get you to follow up things? So he gets the front and the back. Um, once a client signs on with us and they're, uh, we, they moved to our pre-construction process. Now they're in my lane. So I'm handle all the operations side. So I oversee all the project managers. I oversee, um, the, um, the field side in terms of our, um, you know, we call it our pro. So our, you know, kind of in-house production manager, uh, checking in with him, making sure, you know, everybody's set for the field where everybody's going in terms of schedule and manpower. Um, you know, anything within the operations side I handle. So as well as, you know, we're still a small company. So, you know, I'm still doing the books on the back end and stuff too. But uh, that's kind of where, where our roles fall within that. And so we joke, um, my team is very uh, type A. We're all, everybody, I see jokes on my side because we're the very organized side and we keep him organized. So it works yeah. well. That's our, our kind of our dynamic. I joke, I'm like, you know, he, he jokes of, okay, you keep things running both, you know, from the home front and the work front and making sure that everybody's moving in the right direction between kids and the company. So yeah. it, it works for us and it's a really good dynamic. That's fantastic. I mean, you, you both sound very busy. Uh, obviously, you specifically have a lot on your plate. And again, just, uh, you're, it's amazing to talk to you and just hear how well you're handling not only the business, but also, like you said, like the home life too. I mean, that's got to be a balance and a juggling act that I'm sure, again, most people have to deal with, but it's just tough when you're running your own business and doing all of that and staying on top of all these projects. I don't envy your situation, but you're handling it very, very well. So again, well done. I'm um, just hoping that so, teacher doesn't get added with schools closing in California right now. I'm like, teacher cannot get added to the duties. That's not my gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have a, a sister-in-law who lives out in California and I think they just said that their school said they're doing 100% remote going into this fall. And I was thinking like, oh my goodness. Yeah. I Can't know. handle that. So no. hopefully no. we get past all this as soon as possible. It doesn't sound like it's affecting the business too negatively, which is good. I hope that business continues to stay strong out there for you guys. I know it's a big area and I, uh, you know, Sacramento is a big area. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm sure there's plenty of opportunity for you, but you're crushing it. So keep up the good work there. Uh, mm -hmm. Just, just real quick. I always like to end with some note on like, you know, if I'm visiting Sacramento a local place, you know, I think you guys are maybe out closer to Folsom actually. So mm -hmm. a local place that you eat at or some other fun thing that you like to do while you're out there with your family. Oh, so if you're going to Folsom, obviously, um, you know, iconic everything. Everybody's like, oh, Folsom, Folsom Prison, right? Exactly, yeah. So Folsom Prison's there. You can go. They have a tour. You can go look and take at, you know, take into account. Um, for us, we really like, uh, we, we go boating. So Folsom Lake is great. There's tons of places to, um, you know, post up on the beach or, you know, rent a kayak. There's Lake Natoma that feeds off of the dam from Folsom. So paddle, stand up paddle boarding. Um, Old Folsom is great. There's tons of, you know, little local restaurants. Um, but right now we're really wanting to make sure that we support uh, so that they're there. But um, lots of great, you know, eateries, pizza places, you know, taquerias, that kind of stuff that are all in Old Folsom. So if you get a chance to check out Folsom, um, you know, it's, it's near and dear to, to our heart. That's where, you know, we, we got our start and where we lived. Um, and so it's, it's great if you get out to Folsom, California, uh, check out uh, Old Folsom and everything it has to offer. Fantastic. Well, Heather, thank you so, so much for coming on and talking about everything, pre-construction process, job costing, Folsom. We covered a lot here. 
So yeah. thank you so much for sharing all of your insight. And again, we wish you the best of success in your business going forward. Um, and thanks so much for tuning in today. Awesome. Thank you. Bye, everybody.